Hey guys, Sheldon here, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the three habits that I've overcome that have helped me grow my business to levels that I honestly never dreamt possible. So if you like this type of content or if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give it a like. So the first thing on that list is not treating your time as money or treating your time as valuable as it is. And what I mean by that is it really is quite easy to make money. And I say that with confidence, even though you're probably thinking, sure, it's so easy to make money. I've been struggling every single day to try and make money and I, I just can't do it. The truth is once you have the correct knowledge and you know what it takes to grow a su successful business and you know how to do that, then you can repeat that process over and over again and make money. But one thing you can't manufacture or you can't create is time. If you spend time doing something on a daily basis, that time is lost forever. We start off each day with 86,400 seconds. If you were to convert that into dollars and say that we start off each day with $86,400, you wouldn't waste a single second of that. Yet, every day for hours, people get stuck in social media vortexes. They do things that aren't valuable or aren't adding to their life. For example, if you wake up in the morning and you open up Instagram and you start scrolling through it, a minute goes by, five minutes go by, 10 minutes, and the next thing you know, you've been lying in bed for an hour, scrolling through Instagram, checking Facebook, responding to tweets, and that time is time that you will never get back. Those are unrecoverable funds if we were to convert that, those seconds into, into dollars, right? So why would you waste that time when you wouldn't waste that money? You wouldn't throw away money like that every single day if you did have that in actual tangible cash, right? So you need to shift your mindset to realize that how important time is. I know that I struggle with that as well. I eat dinner and sometimes I watch Netflix while I'm eating dinner. And before I know it, I've watched five or six episodes of some series that I gained nothing from that just just blasted into my vision and I haven't learned anything from it. Instead, I'd spend that time learning. I'd rather read a book. I'd rather watch something that I can gain knowledge from. There are so many interviews on YouTube with billionaires that you can actually learn from. You don't have to read their books if you don't enjoy reading. We spend so much time absorbing entertainment, not enough time educating ourselves. I try to spend as much time as I can getting knowledge into my head. I've said this many, many times before, but if I can spend more time getting knowledge into my head every single day, I'm able to spout out more intelligible, intellectual information to you guys and to the rest of the world. And I can use that to then grow businesses and start businesses that become successful and provide me dividends in the future in forms of money and satisfaction with life. If you're sitting watching television, that information is just going in your head and coming out the other side. Sure, there might be some intangible value to that. Maybe you learn something deep down in your brain, but it's really not that measurable. It's not something that we can understand how much value that trash TV, to call it that, is giving us. But if you learn things that actually provide value for you or have proven time and time again that it's valuable information, you will 100% be successful from learning that or from absorbing and consuming that type of information. To add on to that, if you truly are valuing your time as much as you should, then you would outsource things that really aren't worth your time. For example, if you earn $15 an hour and it'll take you one hour to clean your house, would it be better worth your while to pay somebody else to do it or to do it yourself? Maybe it'll take you an entire day to clean your house and organize and declutter or an entire day to run errands. Would you be better off at the end of the day by paying somebody else to do that if you earn $15 an hour? So if you're working for yourself, set yourself a very strict hourly rate that you live by and that you don't work for anything less than that. I know that often I'll get stuck into things looking for bargains. If I'm looking for a new apartment or looking for a new home, I'll spend hours and hours and hours researching, looking for that place, but I would be better off by paying somebody else to do that for me and save that time and invest it into things that actually matter like my business and working day to day on the business that I do because there's actually a return that I can get from that. By looking for things and bargain hunting online and looking for stuff to buy and scrolling through social media and cleaning my house and doing the dishes, like these are things that don't really provide me any value and they're essentially just making me lose money. For example, Bill Gates earns so much that it wouldn't be worth his while to stop and pick up a $100 bill that he's dropped out of his pocket. That is insane to think about. So maybe you want to work towards a point in your life where it's not worth your while to do these simple tasks because you value your time so much. The second thing is associating yourself with the wrong people. We've all heard that we are the sum of the five closest people we surround ourselves with. And that couldn't be more true. And I'm not emphasizing this. I'm not trying to be cliche. This is absolutely the truth. If you surround yourself with people who aren't achieving things in life or, or who aren't doing things that you find value in or that you enjoy or that you think are adding value to your life, you're not going to do those things either. Peer pressure is really strong whether you believe it or not. If you're succeeding in life, everybody will support you. Often people 
well supported to a point until they start overtaking those around them. You might have a good support group around you. Often people will support you and give you guidance and tell you, oh, you're doing so great. You're doing exactly what you want to do until you get to the point where you actually start achieving goals and pass surpassing them and people will start bringing you down and start looking at you differently and being like, okay, that was great, but maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe you shouldn't do that. People will criticize only from below and not above. People who have achieved more than you will never criticize you in a way to bring you down. They'll only try and bring you up. But people below you or those around you that aren't really adding to your life are going to try to bring you down. So be very careful who you spend your time with and who you surround yourself with. Your network is your net worth. I've spent so much time and energy investing in the people that I surround myself with. I've built such solid, strong relationships and friendships with people who have helped me grow as a person and as a business. The business ventures that I've embarked on in my life have been often inspired by my friends and the people around me who have achieved similar things or who I've looked up to and have wanted to achieve similar things too. And that might sound difficult to surround yourself with successful people, but it's not as difficult as it used to be. The internet has made it so easy for us to connect with successful people all around the world. Whether it is going through Instagram and DMing someone who is successful or who, who you admire, dropping somebody a Facebook message or LinkedIn. Don't forget about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is literally designed for us to connect with successful people and successful business owners. It's for us to expand our network and actually grow our businesses and be successful ourselves. Now, I'm not just saying call up or DM somebody that is successful and ask them for their advice or ask them for help. You can't do that. You need to offer something in return. So you need to offer something of value in return to that person. And that's why unpaid internships work so well, because you can give something of yourself, whether that's your time or your energy in exchange to learn from that person who has achieved some sort of success in the industry that you love. When I travel, that is my number one reason for traveling. I don't necessarily travel to see all the beauty and the wonder of the world, even though I do enjoy that and I gain value from that. My main purpose for traveling is to meet interesting people face to face and have really interesting conversations with them and build my network. I met one of my best friends who is a fellow successful entrepreneur on the streets of New York. I traveled to New York with no goal, just to meet people and network. And one day I was walking down the street and I bumped into this guy, we started chatting and we became really close friends and have built businesses together. I traveled to Bali on a worm, I traveled to China and Hong Kong. These are all places that I've traveled to that have helped me grow my network and expand my income and my wealth and my knowledge at the same time. Now, obviously we can't travel right now as easily as we could in the past, but the internet is still available. You can DM people, you can message people, you can Zoom call with people that you would never have thought that you could contact in the past. And if you struggle to connect with people, starting on the internet is the easiest way. You don't have to go face to face with someone if you have social anxiety or you don't know how to market. Don't try and market yourself. Don't try and be the salesman. Just have a regular one-on-one -on -one conversation. The best networks are built from true, authentic integrity of people who are genuinely sharing ideas that matter with one another. That's one of the reasons that I'm sharing these videos with you guys, is to connect with you on a more authentic level and share with you the workings of my brain and connect with people out there who are willing to reach out to me and I can reach out to them and we can build things together. And finally, the third thing I want to share with you is not setting measurable goals. This is a habit that most people fall into every single year. When we set our New Year's resolutions, we set these big goals and we forget about them. At the beginning of the year, everybody is in the gym, working out, working their butts off. And by February, it starts getting emptier. March, the gym is empty again. Every single year, people set these massive unattainable goals that really don't mean anything. They simply give you an ego boost to make you feel good about yourself that you've set a goal, even though that goal will never be achieved by you. You need to set measurable, attainable goals. So at the beginning of every year or right now, because you're watching this video, I don't want you to watch this video and then just go off and do your own thing again and completely forget about it. I want you to actually use this video and do things from it that'll help you and improve your life. So set goals that you can measure. Write them down right now and read them to yourself every single morning. Go over them. At the beginning of every year, I have my journal. This one right here. And you would have seen in my bullet journaling video how I set up my bullet journal to measure my goals and track my progress. At the beginning of every year, I write down one main goal that I have to achieve by the end of that year. And I read it to myself. I repeat it every single morning. I reaffirm what I want to achieve that year so that it's always at the top of my mind and I don't forget about it. I know personally that I struggle with shiny object syndrome. So every time a new idea or a new business venture looks entertaining or interesting, I grab onto it and I forget about what I was working on. But by writing 
writing down my goals and measuring it every single day, every single week, how far I am along with that, the more likely I am to achieve them. And since doing this, I have consistently hit my goals and broken them by writing them down every single day. So I can't encourage that enough that just write down your goals every single day. This is more self-hypnotism and convincing yourself and reminding yourself every day that you can achieve these things. And the person that I got this from is Napoleon Hill. After reading his book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I really just like how he has put that information across in the book and how it changed my mindset to really focus on goal setting and really understand how goal setting works. And to go back to our previous point with connecting with people and understanding how they work and building our network, by reading books, you're able to get inside of the minds of some of the most successful people in history. You're able to get into their living room and have a conversation with them that lasts hours. An average book length is what, five to seven hours? That's a five to seven hour conversation with successful people curated with information that will help you be successful. So if you aren't reading books by people who are successful, you aren't listening to podcasts or watching videos and interviews with successful people, then you're wasting your time. So I challenge you the next time that you sit down on YouTube and you start watching random videos on YouTube or sit down and start scrolling through Instagram or slumming in front of the TV and watching Netflix. Instead, look up interviews with millionaires and billionaires. Instead, pick up a book by somebody who has been successful, somebody that you look up to, whether that's Elon Musk or Steve Jobs or Napoleon Hill or Ray Dalio, whoever it is, pick up one of those books. I'll have some suggestions in the description because these are some of my favorite successful people. And they don't have to be yours. They could be completely different. They could be in a completely different industry, but I highly recommend doing that right now after you watch this video. If you guys like the video, please don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.